Okay, Enterobacteriaceae. Okay, so the first genus is, uh, that we have here is Proteus, and it includes Proteus vulgaris and Proteus mirabilis. Proteus panerii is really rare, but the main ones are Proteus mirabilis, that's the most common one, and Proteus vulgaris. Both of these organisms are swarmers, and you've seen swarming where it just totally obliterates the plate. And the way you tell between Proteus vulgaris and Proteus mirabilis is Proteus vulgaris is indole positive and mirabilis is indole negative. Providencia, there's two main species, Retgeri and Stuartii, those are uh, two main ones. Uh, Morganella, there's only one species uh, to worry about and that's Morganella morganii. Salmonella, okay, Salmonella is, is, is um, is a main pathogen in enter Enterobacteriaceae. There's two main pathogens, actually three, Salmonella, Shigella, and Yersinia, okay? Salmonella includes Salmonella cholera suis, Salmonella typhi, Salmonella paratyphi, and Salmonella enteritidis. One characteristic, chemical characteristic of Salmonella is that Salmonella is citrate positive. It's also modal but citrate positive is uh, a main chemical characteristic. I'm sorry, H2S positive. It's H2S positive. It's black on the KIA agar. Excuse me on that one. Citrobacter freundii, it can be a pathogen, but it's in, in, in Terobacteriaceae. Edwardsia latarda uh, is also kind of rare, but we have, to, we have to include that in our identification. E. coli is the most common uh, of the Enterobacteriaceae of uh, you see E. coli in your gut. And then also too, I'll be lecturing on uh, different um, pathogenic E. coli. There's not only one. I mean, you've probably heard of the E. coli O157 where there, there's about five of them. Uh, and I think next lecture, next week, I'll talk about each one of them. And then the other main pathogen in Enterobacteriaceae is Shigella, uh, dysentery, flexneri, boidei, and sonii, okay? Um, the, the difference between Shigella and Salmonella is that Shigella is non-modal and it's H2S negative. So um, when we do the identification next week, we're gonna be doing um, TSI, uh, triple sugar iron agar, but here, because of the amount of sucrose in it, we will be using uh, KIA agar, but the reactions are the same. And I'm going to talk about the reactions uh, on the uh, KIA uh, later on in this lecture. But these are the main species of Shigella. And then the third pathogen is Yersinia. You heard of the plague. Um, Yersinia pestis is the organism for the plague. Yersinia enterocolitica and Yersinia pseudotuberculosis. All of them cause disease, but the main pathogen is Yersinia pestis. Klebsiella in newborns and infants, Klebnumo is pretty significant. And Klebsiella oxytoca morphologically looks the same as Klebsiella pneumonia, except that, make sure you remember this, that Kleb oxytoca is indole positive. Kleb oxytoca is indole positive. The other main indole positive organism is E. coli, all right? And then we have Enterobacter. Enterobacter is similar to the Kleb, except that it's not as mucoidy. The, the Klebs yellows, both the pneumo and oxytoca are pretty mucoidy colonies. Enterobacter is, is mucoidy, but to a lesser extent. And there's two main pathogens. Enterobacter orogenes and E. cloake. Then there's Hafnia, another rare organism similar to Edwardsiella. We just have to make sure that uh, we know how to identify it. And then Serratia. Serratia marcescens is the only pigmented um, organism in Enterobacteriaceae. It's supposed to be reddish orange, and I'll get in, I'll get uh, describe that more later on in the lecture. Okay, I mentioned TSI, triple sugar iron auger. Um, we get interesting reactions, alkaline over acid, 
I don't know if you did that in microbiology where you inoculate and you get K over A, A over A with H2S and gas. If you didn't, we're going to go, we're definitely going to go over that uh, today in class. Phenylalanine deaminase, uh, usually pseudomonas, uh, not pseudomonas, but proteus is a test for um, uh, using the phenylalanine deaminase, citrate uh, utilization, urease, decarboxylase, indole testing, and cytochrome oxidase. We'll be doing all of these tests um, in this lab this semester. MIO stands for motility indole auger. This tube uh, has, um, it's a multifunctional tube. We can test motility. We can do the indole test and we can measure the presence of ornithine decarboxylase. There's three, D part, D, three decarboxylases, ar um, arginine decarboxylase, ornithine decarboxylase, and, um, oh, I forget the third one. But anyway, there's, there's three of them. The methyl red Vogue's proscar, the next two are linked together to, to test. Both of them test the electron transport pathway. The ONPG, which is the orthonitrophenyl galactoside, that tests the presence of galactosidase, the enzyme beta galactosidase, and nitrate reduction. Okay. Enterobacteriaceae has three. Well, not three, but it has several mandatory characteristic, characteristics. Enterobacteria are all gram-negative rods. They're all gram-negative rods. So that's a given. Facultative anaerobic, that's, an, that's another uh, given as well. They like to live throughout the tube, but they prefer the bottom of the tube. Oxidase negative, they're all oxidase negative. None of them are oxidase positive. They all ferment glucose. And they all grow on McConkey, okay? And they have different characteristics on McConkey, whether they are lactose fermenters and non-lactose fermenters. Another mandatory characteristic is that they reduce nitrate to nitrite, okay? So if you're doing your analysis and you're positive on the nitrate and you see that it's positive for nitrate, that means you probably have an enterobacteriaceae. Catalase is is a test that I don't use if, um, if I'm uh, working up a gram-negative rod in Terobacteriaceae, I save the catalase for the staph uh, species. Asporogenous does not form spores. If it's modal, uh, the type of flagella is peritrichous, meaning that the flagella are located all over the body as opposed to polar flagella, which means that the flagella sticks out at one end. Uh, the pseudomonas, anything that's monad is, is uh, modal, but it uses a polar flagella. They grow on McConkie. All of the enterobacteriaceae grow on McConkie. Nitrate reduction to nitrite, I mentioned that. Hmm. Repeating that slide. Okay. Co colonial coloration. Typically on blood agar, they're gray appearance on blood auger. Uh, they could be mucoidy, they could be dry, and they also could be beta hemolytic. Uh, in broth media, they, can, they produce bubbles, and um, in a blood culture, they grow uh, slightly above the RBC sediment, but they uh, produce bubbles. Another characteristic of anaerobes, they also produce bubbles, and they uh, tend to grow towards the bottom. In Terabacteriaceae, um, normal habitat is the intestinal tract, entero, okay, in, uh, intestinal tract. They're also found in soil and in plants. Typical media of choice for the enterobacteriaceae is blood. Um, like I said, they're gray on blood auger. They can be beta hemolytic. They all love chocolate. Uh, McConkey, they will all grow in McConkey. Uh, the H-E auger, hectoin enteric, the H and H E auger, the hectoin enteric, XLD, Salmonella shigella, CIN, and McConkie. So starting with H and E all the way down to the McConkie sorbitol, those are tubes or media that you use to um, identify 
or select out the pathogens. Hectoenteric, you'll identify anything that's H2S positive. So I mentioned that salmonella is H2S positive. So hectoenteric agar will help detect the presence of salmonella. XLD, also selected for salmonella and shigella. Salmonella and shigella agar is supposed to only grow either salmonella or shigella. The CIN, CIN agar is used to uh, be selected for Yersinia. So Yersinia, So CIN, SIN. So that's how you know. CIN auger is for Yersinia. Max sorbitol auger. That's McConkey, but it's supplemented with the carbohydrate sorbitol. And the importance of that is that the pathogenic E. coli, I mentioned that the E. coli O157 and plus the others, they do not. Uh, utilize, they do not ferment sorbitol. So they're sorbitol negative. So if you run, and I'll show it to you later, uh, the API strip, it has a sorbitol uh, sugar well. If it's negative, then you have to, sub, so, um, you have to work it up for, uh, you have to do an identification for what type of E. coli it is. Because if you do get E. coli and it's sorbitol negative, that's a reportable organism. You can report to the doctor sorbitol negative E. coli, meaning that it's pathogenic. It's, it's a bad guy, okay? Sorbitol negative E. coli is a pathogenic E. coli. Blood and chocolate, most, like I said, most enterobacteriaceae will grow large gray colonies and they're smooth. Klebsiella and enterobacteriaceae, enterobacter, excuse me, are the mucoidy ones. Um, Proteus, character, colony characteristic of Proteus is that it's swarming. Uh, Yersinia enterocolitica, bullseye, uh, bullseye um, uh, appearance on CIN agar. I'll see if I can try to get what that bullseye looks like, but it grows, like I said, the Yersinias um, will grow on CIN agar. CIN is selected for Yersinia. Taxonomies based on biochemical, serologic, DNA, genetic testing. Tribes are no longer used. Identification scheme, usually use six to seven tube differential tests. And we'll, we'll try to use those in this lab this semester. There's broth media like the nitrate. There's agar tube media like the citrate and the urea and the TSI slants. Those are agar based. Uh, abbreviated workups, the IMVIC. Uh, IMVIC is uh, another multifunctional test, which you can do indole, methyl red, Volksproxy, power, and citrate. Uh, nobody uses the IMVIC too much anymore. When I was in um, college, not training, we learned about the IMVIC test. And the spot indole test, that's one of the most common tests on the microbiology bench. And it's to test for E. coli. E. coli is indole positive. And Proteus, um, Proteus vulgaris versus Proteus mirabilis use the indole test. Vulgaris is indole positive, mirabilis is negative. Okay, I talk about the API. Uh, it's an identification system. And then another one is the entero tube. So here's that API strip. On the left side here, starting with this glucose, everything to the right of this is the these are all carbohydrates and everything to, to the left are um, biochemicals like ADH, arginine dehydrogenase, um, LDC, ODC, uh, citrate, H2S, urea, TDA, uh, methyl red and Volkswagen. So these are the biochemical tests and these are the carbohydrates. The, the thing about the API is that Depending on whether or not it's positive, you, you do a system of seven, one, two, and four. So if it's positive and one, and um, so you divide the, the couples into three. So these, these three, the next three, 
So it's positive in the first and the third one. It's one, one, uh, two, and four. It's equal to five. I'm gonna I'll give you the procedure on how to do the API. I don't. We have strips, but I don't know if um, I have access to the database. So this is one of the most common. It's a little bit expensive to do, but it's it's one of the most common um, identification systems for Enterobacteriaceae. So what what happens is, like I said, everything is one, two, and four. You add up, and depending on the the number that you generate. You go to a database or a compendium, and based on the percentage of um, uh, probability percentage, then you can you can ident you can uh, report it as Klebsiella, E. coli, Serratia, whatever, and you have to have like ninety to ninety five percent confidence. If you're into the sixty or sixty five, then you have to take a look at the reactions and and go either way. But that's the API system. Um, here, like I said, a quick look at the carbohydrates, make sure the sorbitol is positive. If it's sorbitol negative and it identifies as an E. coli, then you have a pathogenic E. coli. And the in indexes are based on large databases, and that's the API system. And uh, it's based on recording positive reactions and you generate numer a numeric code five to seven digit number. And you cross-reference that number to the profile registered in the database. The automated systems, I talked about the Vitec system and the microscan system. The Vitec, you have a card. It also has carbohydrates and biochemicals that you uh, introduce into the card, you incubate it overnight, and the instrument will read uh, positive reactions. Same thing for the microscan. The microscan is a well system where uh, the reagents and biochemicals are, are in the well. And then when you add the or, um, organism suspension to those wells, reactions take place and it, and it reads it the following, the following day. So other systems include molecular methods. The flow charts you have, I think you have the Ewing flow charts and serotyping. We won't be doing serotyping in this class, but I'll talk about the flow charts later on. Okay, so there's four groups, and these are called Ewing groups, okay, and that's the, the flow charts that I gave you. Group one has three main uh, genus, G genera, uh, Proteus, Providencia, and Morganella. These organisms are deaminase positive, phenylalanine deaminase positive, and that's group one. Group two also has three uh, organisms, uh, but may, more than one species. Um, but these are H2S positive. They're de phenylalanine deaminase negative, but this, these organisms are H2S positive. Salmonella, Citrobacter, and Eduardziella are H2S positive. Ewing group three is you have four organisms. Um, here you have E. coli, the Escherichia, you have the Shigella species, you have Hafnia and the Yersinia. Okay, these organisms are H2S negative and phenylalanine deaminase negative. And then finally you have group four, which is deaminase negative, H2S negative, but group four is citrate positive. So these three organisms are citrate positive, Klebsiella, Enterobacter, and Serratia. Again, I'll go over the flow charts uh, next week. I don't want to inundate you with all this information. Like I said, there's a lot of it, and I, I want to carefully introduce the flow chart and the information um, at a pretty good pace, at a steady pace. I don't want to dump it all on you. Bio biochemical tests, when you do biochemical testing, you wanna do it from isolated colonies. I know that um, one of the things last semester, um, the stock cultures were, were, not, were not presented as isolated colonies. And that's why I have them uh, uh, sub and recultured and um, you know, restreaked every week or every other week streak for isolation. I don't want to streak for growth because uh, if you streak for growth, you're not going to get isolated colonies. Um, 
the media which also alter test results you have to be careful if you're going to be doing biochemical tests you need to make sure that you're not using mcconkey because the color of mcconkey is pink some of the positive reactions are pink to purple so you may that may be misleading if uh, that you're picking up the the, the color from the auger versus the color from the, the test, the oxidase or the indole test that you're doing. So you don't want to use McConkey. Biochemical tests. Okay, the triple sugar iron auger. This is the TSI test. Okay, and here in this class, it's called KIA, Kligger's iron auger. But it's the same thing, TSI and KIA. It's only a difference in the in the amount of sucrose okay sucrose is in both in both media it's just in different concentration so we're testing for carbohydrate utilization with the production of acid the production of gas and the production of h2s okay so those are the typical reactions in that uh, picture right there so when you read a tsi slant you're reading two parts of the tube. You're reading the slant part, which is the upper portion, and you're reading the bottom portion. Uh, that's called the butt. That the bottom portion is called the butt. Okay. So it's auger, and these are poured slants. I may refer back to this uh, picture. Okay. So the concentration of the triple sugar auger, there's a strategy to the concentrations. Remember, all the enterobacteriaceae use glucose, okay? But as, as you can tell, it's only at 0.1% glucose utilization. So it's given to the organism, but it's given in a very, very small amount. What we want to identify is if the organism is a lactose fermenter versus a non-lactose fermenter, okay? So... So you have lactose fermenter and non-lactose fermenter. The reason why we're interested in the non-lactose fermenter is that the non-lactose fermenter are usually the pathogens, okay? Salmonella is a non-lactose fermenter. Shigella is a non-lactose fermenter. But unfortunately, there are other organisms that are not pathogens. For example, Proteus. Proteus is a non-lactose fermenter, but um, organisms like E. coli is a lactose fermenter. It's pink. Klebsiella, Enterobacter, um, Serratia, those are all lactose fermenters. They're pink. But when you're reading cultures, whether it be a respiratory or a stool, especially the stool for the Salmonella and Shigella, you're looking for the colorless colonies or the non-lactose fermenter. Okay, so there's peptones in the media for enrichment, pH indicator, which is phenol red, H2S indicator for uh, the production of H2S, ferrous sulf um, sulfate indicate is the indicator, and a sulfur source, which is sodium thiosulfate. So when you inoculate the TSI auger, it's, it's a stab and a streak. So with your loop or with your needle, you take, uh, you put some organism at the tip of your, either your needle or your loop, you stab into the, into the auger, go down to the tube, pull it out, you stab and then streak, streak the slant. Then you incubate it overnight for th at 37. You always leave the cap. Whenever you're incubating tubes, you never want to um, leave the cap tight. Okay, so what you look for is the next day are the color reactions. If there's acid production, it's yellow. If you have alkaline conditions, it's red. If there's H2S production, it's black. And if there's gas production, it's air. So depend, you can, so you can interpret based on these reactions what type of organism you have. And then, so there's a coding. Uh, a is for acid, K is for alkaline, G is for the presence of gas, 
A plus sign is for H2S produced. H2S meaning that uh, you have a black, a bla usually it's a black butt, it's never a black slant. And the format is the slant reaction over the butt reaction over whether or not there's gas over, over whether or not you have H2S production. So you can have like A over A, uh, K over A, uh, positive for gas, positive for H2S, okay? I know this terminology is a little confusing, but you're, you'll, get, you'll get it pretty soon, okay? So alkaline, uh, A over A with gas is E. coli, meaning that the slant is alkaline, uh, acid, the slant is acid, the butt is acid, and there's gas production, meaning that the slant is yellow, the butt is yellow, and there's gas production. Salmonella, which is a pathogen. So when you do TSI or KIA reactions, what you look for, what, what you are keying on is anything that's K over A. K over A means you have a potential pathogen. A over A are the non-pathogens like E. coli, uh, Klebnumo, Enterobacter, erog um, Enterobacter erogenes, and cloacae, all of those are A over A. They're the non-pathogens. It's yellow over yellow. However, the pathogens like Salmonella and Shigella are K over A. It's alkaline over acid. And then Pseudomonas, which is not Enterobacteriaceae, make sure you know that, um, is K over A. It does, it, um, it doesn't react uh, on the TSI. So it's K over K, meaning that it's red over red. K over A is red over yellow. A over A is yellow over yellow. So K over A is red over yellow and K over K is red over red. Okay. So the first tube is uninoculated. That's what the tube looks like if you don't have any organism. It looks like red over red, but it's inoculated. That almost looks like the same as Pseudomonas aeruginosa because it doesn't utilize the carbohydrates the way the Enterobacteriaceae use them, okay? So, so you see red over red, it's either uninoculated or Pseudomonas aeruginosa, okay? The third tube there is K over A. K for alkaline and A for acid. So what happened, and then, okay, the fourth tube, I'll go over, over what, wh how the reactions are taking place. So the fourth tube is red, so it's alkaline, so it's K over uh, a black butt. So meaning that there's H2S produced, okay? When you have H2S produced, you can't really tell whether or not the butt is acid or alkaline. But when you have uh, something like this, you have to assume that it's acid. So it's K over A, alkaline over acid with H2S. So that's what the third, the fourth one is, which is salmonella. Salmonella is K over A with H2S. The fourth tube is, who wants to interpret for the fourth tube? A over A, say that again, the fourth tube, I'm sorry, the fifth tube. Yeah, A, over A. A over A with, A over A with, what else do you see there? What's that gap down at the bottom? Yeah, that's gas. That's what happens with gas. Okay, so that's A over A with gas. A over A with gas. So it's yellow over yellow with gas. And that's a typical uh, E. coli enterobacter club. Okay. What about the fourth, the, the last one? Remember when you see the black of H2S, you assume that it's acid. So how would you interpret the, the last two on the far right? Anybody want to try? It's 
A over A with H2S. Okay, good. Remember, if you see the H2S, you assume that it's masking uh, acid. So it's either going to be A over A or K over A. Your pathogen, like I said, is going to be K. You, what you need to look for are the K over A's. Look at the Shigella sonii. That's a pathogen that's K over A. The salmonella is K over A also, but it has H2S. That's characteristic of uh, because it's part of that Ewing group. Remember, H2S positive. And those are the two pathogens there. Any, anything um, acid in the slant are the non-pathogens. So what happens is that, what happens in the TSA auger is that, okay, so it's 0.1% glucose. Like I said, all the enterobacteriaceae will use glucose, but it's, we're, we're only gonna give it a little bit, kind of like a teaser, but we wanna find out if it's gonna utilize lactose. So what happens is the organism will utilize the glucose, okay? So enterobacteriaceae will grow throughout the tube, both, both on the slant and both in the butt. It'll prefer the the butt okay so what happens is if you have a lactose fermenter a lactose fermenter so this has one percent lactose it's going to utilize the glucose because they all utilize glucose and is it going to be a lactose fermenter or not so if it is a lactose fermenter it's going to be happy because now it has one percent lactose so it has glucose it has lactose it's going to produce acid so with carbohydrate utilization, you're going to produce acid. Lactose fermenters are uh, A over A. So on the slant, you're going to have A for acid. And then in the butt, for sure, you're going to get acid because the organism pr prefers low oxygen. So it's going to be growing down below and then producing acid down below. So that's why it's A over A. For the pathogens, again, Enterobacteriaceae will utilize the glucose and it'll utilize the glucose down in the butt as well. But the pathogen is lactose negative. Remember, the pathogens are non lactose fermenter. The pathogens, rem remember that the pathogens are colorless, the pathogens are non lactose fermenters. So if you have an organism that's a non lactose fermenter, it's going to just utilize the glucose, okay? And what happens is the glucose will be utilized, but then it'll easily be oxidized. It'll be easily oxidized because it's, it's on the slant because it's close to oxygen. So when that happens, when the, when the acid produces oxidized, you have alkaline conditions on the slant. So if you have alkaline conditions on the slant, the slant will be red, okay? It'll be alkaline or K on the slant. It's going to be, you're gonna use, it's gonna use the, the glucose, but that's gonna be down in the, in the butt because there's a glucose utilization. Uh, most of the organism will be down in the butt. And so um, the butt will be uh, acid. So for, for the pathogens, you have the alkaline conditions on the slant and then you have the acid conditions in the butt. So you have K over A. And then if it um, produces H2S, then it'll be um, black in the butt, okay? So that's how it utilizes the glucose. It only gives glucose as a tease, but we wanna find out, that's why we throw 10 times more lactose than glucose at the organism. So we wanna see if it's gonna um, break down lactose and produce acid. If it's a non-lactose fermenter, like I said, then it has no more, no more carbohydrates after the glucose, and then you're gonna have alkaline conditions in the slant, and then the glucose utilization in the butt is gonna remain as uh, acid produ production. So the pathogens are, reaction is K over A, and if there's H2S, it's K over A with H2S. All the non-pathogens, like the E. coli, the CLEB, Serratia, and the Enterobacter, they will be A over A with or without gas, okay? So that's how the TSI work. 
So there's that strategy. You only have one tenth the amount of carbohydrates given compared glucose to lactose. So we want to throw a lot of lactose at the organism to see if it will actually produce um, acid. Okay, phenylalanine deaminase. Deaminase again is for uh, proteus. Uh, deamination of phenylalanine uh, by bacteria possessing the enzyme phenylalanine deaminase, and it will produce phenylpyruvic acid. Okay, um, this test is a solid agar poured in slants. The substrate is phenylalanine. There's no pH indicator. So you inoculate the streak. Um, incubate it at 37 degrees overnight. And then after you incubate it, you take out your slant and you have ferric chloride reagent. So you add the ferric chloride to the slant four to five drops, and then you look for a color reaction. If you see a bright green color after you add the ferric chloride, then that's a positive test. There's no color change, then it's negative. So a positive control, uh, deaminase is proteus species. Positive control is for proteus and a negative control is for E. coli. We'll be doing this test in the lab probably in a couple weeks. And that's positive versus negative for phenylalanine deaminase. Citrate utilization. Citrate is the only source of carbon for uh, organisms positive for citrate. Citrate is the only source of carbon. And what it does when it utilizes citrate, it produces ammonium hydroxide. I think that formula is wrong. I think ammonium hydroxide is NH4OH. So what you do, what it does, uh, if it utilizes citrate, then it produces alkaline conditions. So the medium, again, is solid auger poured in slants. The substrate is sodium citrate. And there's a pH indicator, bromthymol blue. So if there's citrate utilization, it's, there's gonna be a color change and it's going to be blue, okay? Citrate utilization is blue. This is one of my favorite because it's a, it's a real pretty blue. And if there's no blue, then it's negative. So if alkaline conditions are, are produced, then it'll turn uh, the, bromthym the bromthymol blue will cause a, a blue reaction. Okay, that's the indicator. Positive controls are Klebnumo versus E. coli, which is negative. Any, if you see a yellow color, that means you over inoculated. I don't think we'll have any problems with that in this class. And there's a pretty blue. It's kind of hard because the negative almost looks like, I mean, students always come up to me, is this positive or is this negative? But if you definitely see You'll, you'll see the blue if it's there, you can tell. And that's it for this lecture. Wow, are there any questions? All right. Okay, so. Let's do, let's have you guys do the lab, uh, the lab. All you're gonna do is interpret your plates. Describe what you say on the plates. And I have worksheets up here for you. And you guys did E. coli and Pseudomonas, right? Okay, I'll come up and get a worksheet and just interpret your plates and do it real, real quick after that. Then, then you'll do the quiz and then we're good.